Shook, 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 shook. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Dachi, and welcome to something very new here. I have never done a movie review on my channel, and I thought it'd be a great idea because on Saturday night I went to see the third and final movie of the Fifty Shades trilogy, aka Fifty Shades Freed, and I'm still shook. <laughs> also, can we please acknowledge Grey on Grey? Yes how funny and punny I'm trying to be. It's not working out for me. Anyways, back to the review. Holy crap. So yeah, last Saturday night I went and saw the third movie in the Fifty Shades trilogy. I am still shook. I mean, saying this, I am a fan, so there are, I am going to be saying all the good things, but I'm also going to be criticizing. I don't want this to be a, oh my god, it's the best movie ever, 10 out of 10, you guys have to see it. I don't want to be like that. Although I thoroughly enjoyed it, I'm definitely going to be detailing and mentioning some things that I did not enjoy, things that I think they should have put in or not put in. And yeah, so it's going to be a full review, not just all the good things, I'm going to add in bad things too. Just a little disclaimer, there will be spoilers in this movie, so if you're someone that's like, yo, I don't want to actually go and physically see it, but I want to know everything that happens within it, then you've clicked on the right video. If you are planning on seeing it and you don't want to accidentally see a spoiler, don't worry girl, got you covered. I'm going to put a massive spoiler sign on the screen. I'm also going to put the time frames in which I do speak about spoilers in the description box down below if you want to skip through them. I'm not going to talk about them first things first. I've just got a little book here. I've literally got so much written down from the movie. Overall, as a movie, fantastic. And obviously I'm biased because I like the books and stuff, but I didn't like the second movie as much, even though I loved the book. So, oh my gosh, fantastic. Like I, it is definitely my fave out of the three by far. When I walked out of the movie theater, I actually was thinking to myself, this could actually be one of my favorite movies of all time. Like the Fifty Shades movies, I like them, but they're definitely not like my fave in the whole entire world. So to come out and be like, yo, I think that's my new favorite movie, really impressive. Can I just mention Dakota and Jamie nailed it again. Their on-screen compatibility, how well they work with each other. Oh my gosh, fantastic, like literally so good. And as per usual, Dakota was a fantastic lead. She honestly, makes the whole entire movie and I know that is her role as the female lead as basically it is her story. The story is about Anna. And can I just say the addition of Sawyer? Can I get a H-O-T-T-I-E? Oh man, like he is so hot. They should have made him Christian because damn. Now I want to mention some of my favorite scenes without giving away spoilers so don't worry if you don't want a spoiler I'm not going to ruin it for you. So there's a fight scene between Anna and Christian about something quite intense um, and Anna really voices her opinions on it and it's fantastic. It's really emotional. It, like It's so intense that you feel like you're there with them. Um, it's kind of awkward because you're like ah! This is escalating quickly. Really, really good. I absolutely love how the characters were portrayed in that scene. It was so intense. Really well done. Really well done. Obviously, the end scene. I love oh, the way they wrapped things up. I have never watched either a show that's like a series or a movie series that has wrapped everything up so perfectly. I was going to cry and I'm not going to give anything away obviously if you haven't seen it but just the end scene it was wrapped up so well. <sighs> I also loved the opening to the movie and without giving anything away um, the scenes were crazy. The opening scenes were great like I didn't know how they were going to open with it and it was awesome it really just drew you in. And last but not least there's a scene where Anna is telling off Gia who is the architect who is going to be designing the house that Christian bought for him and Anna. It was just brilliant. It's really funny. I think there's a little scene about it in the trailer, so I'll pop it here. Um. I'm sure you're very good at what you do. Otherwise, Christian wouldn't have asked for your input. But <laughs> please stop speaking to my husband as if I weren't here. Anna. <laughs> I have designed many prestige projects. You may call me Mrs. Gray. If you want this job, I suggest you stop making eyes at my husband and keep your hands to yourself. But yeah, that was fantastic. I actually laughed so much. It was perfect. The whole cinema was in stitches. It was really funny. All right, so overall as a whole, the film definitely had more sex, but less red room, which is true to the book. And a lot of the sex was a lot more like vanilla and not intense. It wasn't really like that. Obviously it was for certain scenes because that is the whole BDSM Fifty Shades franchise, but there were scenes where it was just 
no, like just sex and so much love between the two of them and I love that. I also love the fact that in this movie the relationship between Anna and Christian really evolved and it did through the books as well and it was perfect to see how that actually uh, translated into the movie and their relationship seemed so much more like sweet, fun and flirty and I'm not saying that it wasn't in the other two movies but a lot of the time, and it is true, Christian in even the first and second movie was a lot more angry and so protective and things like that. And he seems to ease off a little in this one, not too much because he is his protective controlling self. However, there were so many fun flirty scenes with the love that they had for each other and that was so nice to see. I loved that part. Now, as always, and movies and books, they never get this 100% right. Now, there were some scenes that I will later discuss in the spoiler section that they either left out of the book and didn't put in or added which I didn't think were quite necessary. As always, no one can get that 100% right. It just happens. It's fine. Something I did wish about the movie, a little criticism, was that it went a little bit longer, 50 shades dark. And I know it's only 15 minutes. I think it went for an hour and 45, I'm afraid. And darker went for two hours. So I know what's 15 minutes, but 15 minutes could be like one or two scenes. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, if anything, it, it did feel not rushed, it just felt like I wasn't sitting in the cinema for that long. So yeah, I think it could have been a little bit longer, could have, be could have benefited from some extra scenes, but still, really good movie. I've spoken about Anna a lot, and she is fantastic, and she was flawless throughout the whole movie. But I also want to mention Christian's character development. He has grown and evolved so much since Fifty Shades Darker, I mean, since Fifty Shades of Grey, which of course he has because that's what the authors did with him, but it was fantastic to see even between Fifty Shades Darker and Fifty Shades Freed how much he actually evolved as a person and as a partner and it was just amazing. I actually loved him in this movie. He was fantastic. Now, the soundtrack. What is everyone talking about? I watched a couple more reviews before I did my own, and everyone is dissing the soundtrack. What? Oh my god, what are you guys doing? I loved it. Maybe it's my sort of sort of genre that I like. I mean, excuse me, but with bangers like this, I think maybe I it does appeal to my sort of music genre a lot more than others possibly um, I do understand that in the other movies there was a lot more contemporary even classical music I suppose every scene that had a song playing I felt like it fit it perfectly honestly um, and I'm not just saying that because I love the movie I honestly soundtrack 10 out of 10 I mean Rita Ora she did really well snagging that because her song is an absolute banger and she's in the movie and she got a song on the soundtrack. Like, she is goal. She is kicking goals, that woman. Okay, guys, strap yourselves in. Here comes the spoiler part. If you don't want to watch this, then skip to the end. I'll put a little timestamp down below of when I stop talking about the spoilers. And without further ado, let's get into the juicy spoilers. Okay, so this is where I'm going to talk about and show, hopefully, if I can find some scenes that I can put on here, these specific spoilers that I'm talking about right now. I mentioned previously, my one of my favourite scenes was the start with the honeymoon scene um, and everything, just basically their entire honeymoon. Island hopping, going to different places, I loved it. I loved the filming of it, I just absolutely love how they produced it. However, I did think it was quite short and now I know it was short. Obviously, Christian gets the call that part of his office is on fire. I think they could have shown a lot more before that he gets that call, but I don't know. It was. It was still good. Now, something really sneaky that you may have missed um, in the trailer. Now, I'll play it here. I'll get the specific clip here, but basically it shows Mrs. Robinson or Elena, which is Christian's ex, like the one that pretty much made him into this fucked up human. So on the trailer, they show her opening the door to her salon and Christian's there. Now, I know what part this happens in in the movie, but they did not add this scene in. I don't know if there's actually any dialogue or if they literally would just show... When it comes out on DVD, it's actually going to be an extended version. And I feel like there is also another scene on the trailer... The comfort. Um, ...of Christian punching someone in the club. I know what that's from from the book, so I have a feeling they will add a few extra scenes in in the extended version. So, after... Anna went to save Mia from Jack. Grace, which is Christian's mum, or stepmom, is in the room with Christian and Anna recovering. But 
And all we, the only thing we ever hear about Mia is that she's fine. Like Christian's, because I'm pretty sure Anna says, how's Mia, is she okay? And Christian's like, yeah, she's fine. But you don't see her actually recover. I don't think you really see her for the rest of the movie. You don't really see any of the family for the rest of the movie. I think the last time you see them all together is basically when, when they're in the bar, which is another thing I want to talk about. Yeah, you don't really see her and it's sort of like, wouldn't the whole family be there being concerned and like worried about her? But I suppose the movie's not really about them, but I don't know. I just found that a bit strange. Um, the end scene, let's talk about the end scene. I literally think I nearly cried. I nearly felt a tear roll down my cheek. With their newborn child, Teddy, he is so cute. Oh my gosh, they picked the perfect kid. Um, and then you can see that she is also pregnant with their next child, who is a girl. Spoiler! And it also shows like drone shots and footage of their house and their just their entire like land and it's awesome. It's such a great ending to the whole trilogy. You just see them as a family and how it's going to be and they just looked so happy and oh my god it was so good this movie definitely had a lot of relatable conflicts in it and i felt a lot of the time when they were fighting about rich couple issues that they could be issues that people would legitimately be having and i found that awesome because instead of it just being all bdsm or subdom stuff it was actually really relatable and things that people would really be fighting about in the real world it wasn't just all in their dreamland movie sort of book thing do you know what i mean as i mentioned previously just seeing the growth of their relationship so good i really enjoyed that like it was great to see what is in the book reflected in the movies in like seriously perfect fashion oh my gosh the awkward scene of jamie dornan singing it's christian when they're in the Aspen house and they, like, I think it's Mia, Jose, no, it's Mia, Elliot and Anna all come out onto the landing and Christian is playing the piano, which he's fantastic at doing, don't get me wrong, but he's also singing and he's not tone deaf, but he's certainly not a great singer like they make him out to be. And it's just one whole awkward scene of us listening to Jamie Dornan sing. Oh! controversial the ice cream scene now you guys will know what I'm talking about if you've seen it it's been on Twitter it has been everywhere I'll try and place it here it's a little R uh, 18 plus but I'll try my best and Anna can't sleep because she had a bad dream like a nightmare anyway so she's up eating ice cream of all things in the kitchen and then yeah like Christian comes in and Christian was like looking for her and was like there you are and like she spills it down his body and then licks it up you know and then they swap and she does it for him but the whole thing that everyone was talking about was that the ice cream got caught in his hair down there it wasn't so much his pubic hair because he had like pants on but it was like the start and everyone was gonna like Ugh, gross and I was like hot to watch not hot to do 10 out of 10 would not recommend but it was hot to watch. Shut up. Like, literally shut up. Okay, and the last thing I want to mention, and this does not happen in the book, so when Elliot proposes to Kate, um, yeah, that did not happen in a club. Proposing in a club. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have thought about it too. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that in the book it actually happened in a restaurant. They all went out for like a really nice dining experience and it happened there. Um, but I loved, I actually loved the scene everything about it except for the fact that it was in a club but multi-million dollar budget movie but they did it in a club it's fine so yeah that is basically everything i have to say now there are a lot of things that don't align so there were things that happened in the book that didn't happen in the movie and vice versa um i actually stumbled across an article that had like 30 things that happened in the book that didn't happen in the movie or happened in the movie that happened differently in the book. If you guys want me to do a video on that, I can. Uh, just let me know in the comments below if you really like this and you want me to do another video similar to that. I think that's about it. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. And if you haven't seen it and you really want to, or you're planning on it, oh, do it ASAP, Rocky. It was so good. Every movie has pros and cons, but this one definitely, I mean, the pros definitely outweighed the cons. And to people out there who don't like the Fifty Shades trilogy, that's completely fine. I'm not forcing it down your throats, not telling you to go watch it. You didn't even have to watch this video. But if you made it to this far, then you must have liked my review, despite not liking the trilogy. So, thank you, I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. And, yeah, I'm shook. 
And I'm actually going to be watching the first and second movie tonight because I loved it so much. And I might go see the third one again. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up because it helps me out a lot. Let me know if you enjoy the Fifty Shades movies and or books in the comments below as well. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm going... And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm going to be doing an awesome giveaway soon. So if you want the chance to be in the draw for that, then make sure you subscribe, click that bell, and follow me on Instagram. And I will see you guys in my next video on Wednesday. I'm uploading a vlog. Bye!